Science Telegram and we are now in Colombia, in Bogota, during DEFCON and we are currently at ZK House and uh, here are our guest, uh, John Wu, who is Head of Growth at Aztec Network, it's a, a, a privacy layer for Web3. Great to have you here, John. Thanks, Anna. Thanks so, can you tell about your background? So, when did you first know out about crypto and how did you get involved into the industry? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I first started in crypto um, about 18 months ago, actually. Oh, um, really? I, yeah, I came from a consulting and finance background and I went to business school, so very traditional finance type mm -hmm. of guy. Um, and I got started in yeah. crypto really just on Twitter. Um, I started covering DeFi. Um, I started uh, covering the Fay Protocol launch and Olympus DAO, if folks remember that, from uh, 2021. And then actually landed a role very briefly with Uniswap um, and quickly after that became ZK Build and uh, fell into the ZK space and started working at Aztec. And yeah, that's all she wrote. I've been at Aztec for over a year and it's been a very fun ride. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. So, like, when did you start working with Aztec, and uh, why why did, uh, did uh, ZK uh, got interest you? Yeah, I've been at Aztec for about a year. Um, I think ZKs are interesting because of just fundamentally what they are. The ability to prove something uh, without having to reveal it is an incredibly powerful primitive. Um, and obviously it's been used right now for scaling uh, within the ZK, within the Ethereum space. So you're seeing the advent of a bunch of ZK EVMs. And um, we of course believe that ZK should also be used for the zero knowledge part um, to preserve user privacy. And so we're really excited to come to market with a couple of awesome products. One is Aztec Connect, which is a VPN for Ethereum. Yeah, um, that's actually an interesting explanation. Yeah, it, it's a privacy layer that allows you to add privacy to any existing mm -hmm. Ethereum layer one application. And we're thrilled by that. We're here at ETH Bogota and we've had a bunch of hackers build very cool things like a private NFT minting. It allows you to mint an NFT with complete privacy, so you don't really know um, which NFT projects people are aping into. We think that's a pretty cool hackathon project. And then um, we've also got this ZK domain-specific language called Noir. And Noir, it's still in development, right? It is in development. We have just uh, done our first release, and a bunch of hackers have also um, built on top of Noir for ETH Bogota. And what Noir allows you to do is it uh, helps you create ZK circuits in the easiest way possible. Mm -hmm. And it also plugs into multiple proving backends. And so if you know our crypto backend called Berettenberg yes, for Aztecs doesn't work well for you, you can use you know other proving systems, other smart based proving mm -hmm. systems. So we're really excited for the future of programming for privacy. Um, and yeah, you focus on just the first step there. Yeah, and actually, uh, Aztec uh, sounds uh, quite a lot similar to Tornado Cash, and we know the recent uh, events in August that uh, Tornado Cash developers were arrested and uh, banned by OPEC. Uh, so how is uh, Aztec different, and uh, how, how do you love the user privacy? Yeah, nominally, you know, Tornado Cash is a privacy project, Aztec is a privacy project, but our ambitions are much, much greater than Tornado. I think the issue with Tornado is it really was a single-use application. What it, the only thing it allowed you to do was mix coins. Um, what Aztec allows you to do with um, both Aztec Connect and with Noir is build an entire programmably private network. And so there are things um, that can be built with Noir, for instance, that are totally non-economic. You can build a Battleships game um, on Ethereum, and actually one of our uh, ETH Bogota hackathon winners did build a Battleships game, where privacy has utility that's not just financial and it's not just hiding your transactions. Um, so our goal is to build a network that allows for privacy at the default layer mm -hmm. um, and allows for a, a thriving ecosystem of applications beyond just anonymization. Mm -hmm. And so even though we kind of look similar, you know, Tornado Cash would be one one hundredth of the functionality of the long term mm -hmm. uh, network that Aztec's trying to build. And how do you generally see the US regulations in crypto? Yeah, I think OFAC is a really tough one. Obviously, we've been talking a lot about it because um, it's unprecedented. Obviously, um, banning a piece of immutable code rather than an entity or a person um, or a product, um, a, 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 a thing, um, is a really challenging precedent to set, uh, especially for programmers who are not necessarily writing these technologies with any intent, not to facilitate you know, North Korea you know, moving funds away from Ethereum, mm -hmm. but really just to protect basic human rights. Um, the other challenging thing with OPAC is that it's not really a regula regulator in the traditional yeah. sense. It is an intelligence agency, um, and it is somewhat extra legal. Um, they don't have to publish a memo on 
their logic of why they banned tornado cash. They can just do it um, because ultimately their mandate is to protect the national security of the United States. Um, we do think that obviously there's been a chill on privacy, but that's why we're excited about these non-economic use cases. Um, we're excited for people to build privacy into all of their applications and enable privacy, not just for folks trying to hide their activity, but mm -hmm. um, as like a core feature for applications. And does your team as well, uh, as well cooperate somehow with uh, the US regulators, uh, like to educate them and so on? Yeah, absolutely. We're in touch with many global regulators um, mm -hmm. around many jurisdictions. So we're actually a UK domicile company, and so we have mm -hmm. a close relationship with regulators there, and in Singapore, and of course the United States. Um, so it's something that we're trying to educate folks on. I think a, a good reminder of um, privacy being important is, you know, the, the President of the United States himself uh, signed an executive order not even that long ago, about six months ago, um, and mentioned consumer privacy and blockchain 10 times. Mm -hmm. um, consumer privacy is obviously really important um, to regulators, and part of our job is convincing folks that you can get consumer privacy and you can get compliance in a programmable way um, without some of the security considerations that got Tornado placed mm -hmm. on a ban list. And so as well, you told that uh, you got into crypto from uh, traditional consulting. So uh, in Aztec, uh, do you uh, cooperate already or do you plan to cooperate with uh, the enterprises? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think one of the basic um, assumptions behind privacy is that enterprises and businesses won't want to use blockchain without it. Um, because if you think about losing privacy as a competitive advantage, right, having to publish everything that you do on chain to the entire, for the entire world to see, um, it's, it's an obvious feature that enterprises want. Um, it's something that we're building toward right now. Um, for the time being, we're partnered with Ethereum Layer 1 applications um, like Maker and um, uh, Abe and Lido and Element, um, but we're definitely looking to partner with institutional investors and enterprises going forward. And so, will Aztec have uh, expand to other layer ones like Avalanche, Solana, or any others? Yeah, so we can do that because the way the ZK rollup works is it's a bunch of off chain compute um, that mm -hmm. then gets verified by um, an on chain smart contract. And so we could deploy to another L2 even, and often mm -hmm. as an Arbitrum as an L3, we could deploy to um, uh, we could deploy to Avalanche or Phantom or any of the alt ones. We've elected not to for the time being. Instead, we're going to build toward our own execution environment mm -hmm. um, that will support programmably private smart contracts using our new ZK language mm -hmm. more. And so as well, you got into crypto pretty recently during the uh, bull market, and uh, now we are uh, obviously in bear market. So how do you see it, and uh, what development do you see, and when do you expect the next bull run? <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, hard to say. Um, obviously, people are a little bit less optimistic right now because everyone just has a lower net worth. But I will say the signal in the industry is much, much stronger. Um, the number of voices that have remained in the industry are the hardcore builders, the people who really believe in the values of crypto. Um, and so actually, I think it's been one of the best times to do this space. Yeah, that's true. And as well, like, do you have any invest into crypto currently? Can you share some of your altcoin picks? Um, I'm not really a big altcoin guy, but um, I own some ETH and, of course, Bitcoin. Um, mm -hmm. I, I try to stick to the majors, um, mm -hmm. given, especially given I work in the Ethereum ecosystem. Are you into NFTs? Um, I was into a couple NFTs, but I'm just a renowned, terrible NFT trader, so I've stopped, <laughs> I've stopped playing the NFT game. And uh, can you share as well as some few future plans for the development of Aztec? Yeah, um, right now it's all about commercializing Aztec Science and making sure we have all the best innovations uh, for the VPN and for Ethereum. And then going forward, it's about building a fully programmable network with Noir as the smart contract. Um, that's what we're codenaming Aztec 3, and we hope to get that together in the next couple years. Great. So I wish you good luck in the developments. Thank you for interesting conversation. Thank you, Anna.